well thank you very much uh, for spending a bit of time watching this video um, and allowing me to explain a little bit about uh, our natural perils directory and how it can help you make the best kind of environmental decisions uh, in terms of soil related geohazards. What we've we've done here is is look at the soils across all of uh, England and Wales and Scotland and try and identify those hazards that um, are most problematic uh, for your industries. Um, so we've been working in this area for about 20 years um, and the models have been refined and improved uh, and updated over that time. If you look at the the most dominant form of subsidence in the UK, uh, that's something called clay related subsidence and, and the mechanism behind this is that clay soils, well certain clay soils, have a great potential to shrink uh, as they lose water and then swell as uh, they re-wet up in, in the autumn and the winter months. Um, and this, this shrinking and swelling uh, is, is particularly problematic for, um, for houses. Uh, it also has a, a pretty catastrophic effect on, on certain pipes in the soils as well. Uh, so this is a, a key model. Um, so the, the way that we've developed our, our models, um, and you can see one of them on the screen just behind there, uh, these kind of red to green images of red is high risk and, and green is less risk. Um, the way we've built these models up is first of all uh, we, we look at the soil and we say does the soil have the potential to shrink as well? Um, so we've mapped uh, the the kind of foundation depth so we, we look at the soil there which goes down to from about the surf well from the surface down to about one one meter twenty one meter fifty centimeters um, and We've, we've taken samples of the soil, examined its uh, swelling properties, and that gives us a, a, a potential of, uh, of shrink swell behavior. Then what's really key is that we overlay on top of that map, another map, um, some climatic data sets, uh, which are looking at the potential soil moisture deficit. Um, and what this is saying is, uh, are we going to have those summer months where the soils actually do dry out um, because it's hot enough and dry enough um, that we have these uh, these shrinking conditions. Um, so the overlaying of those two maps is what gives us our subsidence, our clay related subsidence model. And that's great. Um, what's really exciting about that though is that we can we can just take out the climatic layer and put in a different one so we can look at future climates, we can look at uh, the 2050s or the 2080s uh, and, and ask the same questions, you know, what substance is going to be like in those time periods? Um, so from an insurance company's perspective, what this allows you to do is, um, you know, plan for event years, depending on your appetite for risk. So you can say, well, I don't want to, um, to consider uh, soils which, you know, even have a potential on a, a one in five year or one in 10 year or one in 20 year event for subsidence or I'll increase my premiums on that basis. So it gives you that flexibility depending on, on your appetite for risk um, to make the choices which suit your company the best. Um, or likewise from a, a water company's perspective looking at uh, the type of pipe that you're going to put in in the ground as various different pipes when you're fixing them. Uh, you can consider those kind of future climates as well. So that's really useful. So clay related subsidence uh, causes about 70% of the subsidence claims um, in the UK. Um, other forms come from uh, sand washout where you have fine textured soils like sand uh, and you have a dripping drain pipe or a leaking pipe or a le leaping, leaking uh, sewer. What you can form are these kind of cavities around that pipe which the pipe itself can settle into or indeed um, if the cavity gets large enough, it can even affect built structures like houses. Um, so we have a clay model which looks at these um, cavitation potential. Uh, sorry, not a clay model, a sand model which looks at the uh, cavitation potential around these pipes. Um, and that's, that's another useful thing. Other forms of substance come from the soft and compressible soils where the, the soil is not actually strong enough to, for, to support the weight of the, the structure of the house and so you get some kind of settling of that into 
of the house into the soil. So we've mapped those type of soft and compressible soils. We also look at peat shrinkage, where um, the, the peats which are being drained are actually shrinking dramatically, in some cases, you know, numerous meters over the last hundred years. Um, and so we've mapped those areas where peat shrinkage is also an issue. Um, the last five years have been uh, noticeably colder. Actually, they've been significantly colder than uh, the preceding 12 or, or so years. Um, and so what we're, we're seeing is the advent of frost heave in certain silty soils. Um, this is where you have a, enough water in the system and you get upward migration and the, the formation of ice, ice lenses uh, in the soil. And this, this has um, some subtle heave effects. Um, honestly, it's not too damaging for, for houses and larger structures, but it can have effects on, on near surface um, foundations. So uh, if you have a path or a shed um, this, or, or under a road, this can cause um, pretty uh, noticeable heave effects. So uh, we also have a model that looks at those soils which are particularly susceptible to frost heave. Um, when it comes to flooding, flooding is, is, is hugely costly for the UK uh, insurance industry um, and our model uh, is slightly different to many of the other models uh, for flooding which are on the market. Uh, what we don't do is, is look at um, the, uh, the water under the influence of flood defences, um, we've excluded those completely and, and instead what we do is we take a forensic view of the soil. We say um, does this soil have evidence that uh, it was laid down by water or affected by standing water? So we're looking for characteristic uh, deposits, alluvium, um, where there's a lot of mottling. Uh, those kind of forensic uh, clues that say uh, this soil has been flooded in the recent geological past. And so then once we've done that, then we can draw those outlines and produce a flood extent layer for you. Um, and the feedback that we've got from um, certain of our insurance company uh, clients has been really positive in this light because what it does is it provides them with a backstop that when the flood defenses fail, this is exactly where the water is going to go. Um, so that's always useful to know. Um, but basically the message here is, uh, you know, we'd love to work with you. Uh, we've got a, a range of different models and we work with, you know, very large number of companies in, in lots of different ways. Some people like GIS models, um, others just like to know spatial risk on, on postcode um, lookup tables. Uh, you know, we're, we're here uh, to work with you to help you make the best type of environmental decisions that you can. So uh, give us a call. Thanks very much.